Hello and welcome to the news of the week. This week in Sandbox, let's first take a look at the events that are happening. The Game Maker Fun Builders Challenge. So if you have created an experience and you have land to publish it on, then make sure to be publishing that experience uh, so you can be in for a chance to earn some amazing rewards. Make sure to go check out the Builders Challenge and it's got loads of information to know all about eligibility and all of the important information. Space Invaders in Shibuya 109 is still ongoing until the 14th of March. And Love and Music Festival is also continuing up until March 28th. You need to collect 200 EP to be eligible to earn the rewards here. There are rewards for landowners, avatar owners. There are rewards for open to absolutely everyone. So do go check this one out. Some amazing experiences included here. Into the Unknown Game Jam is in full swing right now. You cannot register. Uh, registrations have closed now. Uh, but do keep your eye on the events page for more game jams happening. And we have Vox Edit Contest showing up on the events page right now. So we have the Vox Edit Easter Contest. There is a regular category and a beginner category. All of the important information and dates are here as well as brand new happening as well as a live award ceremony to announce the results for this Vox Edit Contest. So make sure to tune in then. You can click learn more to go to the Medium article which will give you a full rundown as well as giving you some inspirational images if you need to be inspired over what to create for this contest. Other things happening within the sandbox. We do have the Hellboy avatar collection to so go check out the Hellboy avatar collection and mint your avatar. We also have the Magnificent Century. You'll be able to mint your avatar this week with this one. Now it's time for our mentions of the week and we are going to start with for our mentions of the week we're going to start with an experience which is Casina Season 1 made by Vox Machina Studios. So the, this experience is absolutely amazing. Great job with this and definitely definitely suggest you guys go check this experience out. And the second experience I'm going to mention and the second experience that I'm going to mention is the uh, Packer Death Run experience. Go check out that experience and it's by the Alpaca de Braz. Next up is an asset that is up on the marketplace. This is by Candy H. And it is the Gamer Girl Setup PC for 45 sand. Absolute amazing so cute love the detail here um absolutely fantastic they also have numerous animations happening here we've got um things happening inside of the computer very well done on this asset so go check that out Next up is another asset, uh, 69 Sands. This is an equipment. It is a headpiece and it's by AU24K. It is the Butch the British Bulldog headgear. So much love and creativity has gone into this and absolutely looks fantastic. Love, love the detail, love the drool coming out of his mouth. Then by Zero Game Studios, we have this little imp for 17 sand absolutely adorable love love this character so cute and then finally we have the wizard game buddy up for sale 24 sand for this one created by not animated so cute and not animated actually recently just won the bonkus game jam for their game buddy forge so definitely do go check out game buddy forge you can also check out the game jam award ceremony over on youtube now for our artist mentions so our first artist mention goes to azim they created this amazing setup i believe they entered this for the warriors vox edit mini contest really wanted to highlight this one just because i thought they had done a really good job 
at Coral or donating their entire equipment set. It looks very nice. Well done. They've got some good shapes going on, especially with that sword. I really like the curve on the sword. They did a good job with that. So do go check out a Zim. Our next artist mention goes to Polar Joy Art. I know we are already past Chinese New Year, but I really, really wanted to highlight this Chinese New Year asset that they had created. It's absolutely fantastic. The level of detail inside of this asset is just fantastic. This would have taken them so much time and effort to create this. Uh, so, so much detail in the whole of the body. Just, I was astounded. There's, there's nothing else I can say to this. It, it is fantastic. Thank you for tuning in to our news of the week. And now back to your regular scheduled content. Hey, welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining. I am your host today, Peter, also known as Cyber Dragon. And today we're going to play around with the rule system and some sort of combination uh, puzzle. And we're going to work some mechanics and we're going to put them step by step and make them uh, simple at first and then try to make them a little bit more complicated. The whole idea is to scale. So to find the most optimized solution possible. So that way we can have quite a bit expanded on the map because um, there's many, many ways to do things. And and I want to play with a uh, component I really haven't played with before, uh, which is the uh, switch component. And I'm wanting to see if I can make it uh, send variables to the rule system and use that as a toggle on and off for right or wrong. Uh, with combinations. So uh, we'll dig straight in. I hope uh, everyone's well today. Um, so I'm going to start off on a blank map, keep it fresh, and I'm going to bring out a tile that I made for a previous stream for uh, Hugh Hustle. And this one here allows you to change to different colors. So if I add an animated decoration, you can see all the different colors it can be. There's already one in the um, in the library as a basic asset, uh, multicolor tile, similar concept, but this one's really bright. I find that all the colors glow. So I'm just gonna stay with something that I created, something more subtle. And basically what I wanna do is have a player press E on tile um, to transition from one color to another and we can have like five of them or ten of them and when the player has selected the right color on the right tile um, the combination will be activated in a rule system and it can send a message to open up a door or teleport the avatar or, or things of that nature hey skate room artist welcome pg lucas is right How's it going, mate? All right, so we're just going to create a combination tile. So basically, players should be able to press E to cycle through the different colors, and then we'll have a whole bunch of them. And the player needs to put the right tile in the right color in order to open up a door. Um, but we've had someone in the community who wanted to have 128 tiles and have five different levels of 128. Um, that's quite a lot of um, resources, I find. So we're gonna try to find a solution for that as well, uh, if possible. If it's a multiplayer game, it probably won't be possible um, because you're gonna have performance issues. So if we go to add uh, animated decoration, which is the basic thing you need for your tiles to switch through colors, You'll see the maximum you're allowed is 151 um, before you get like big performance impacts. So it's going to be difficult to even achieve something that massive, um, but we'll, we can play around with the basics and work out a small amount and see how well we can optimize it. OG Shakespeare, how's it going? All 
All right, so first thing we're going to do is um, we'll just play around with one for the time being. We'll bring it to the front. Uh, we'll remove collisions so the player won't stumble on it because it's just floating above the ground. And we want to be able to cycle through it by pressing E. Um, so we've got the first one here. We can do blue. We'll add another one for green. Actually, we'll go red, uh, yellow, and then green. Uh, we can do infinite loop. Uh, we could do play once, but we can't have them as interact. So message here will be interact. Uh, but if I did it on this one as well, let's see what happens. Let's play with that idea. If we had interact, it will turn blue. We can make that interruptible. And we'll make this one interruptible. I'm going to put it on all four of them. I haven't done this before, so I have no idea how it's going to decide or work. And we might unlock something, or we might not. Let's have a look. All right, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and press E, and it's chosen blue. If I press E again, nothing's happening. So it looks like it only reads the first interact in the menu, and it won't move on to the next one. So that's what happens there. If I change the blue to say green, the first one in the list, you can see it's turned green. And if I press E again, nothing happens. We can't get past it. So it only reads the first message in the list. That's interesting. Good to know. So we want the player to press interact to be able to cycle through each color. And there's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, first, you can do replace asset. So let's add a um, I think one of these interaction boxes might be okay. Maybe if we have something smaller like that. Cool. Now I need to add animated decoration again because I deleted the other asset. That's right, I'd rather delete it <laughs> than to try to light it up. I just let the grid do that automatically. Perfect. We'll go ahead and make these interruptible as well. And we want to wait for a message. Cool. Um, now we need to have some sort of interaction on this cube. So if we type in message broadcaster, we can have 150 of these. You can see the max amount. Um, if we go for speaker, we can only have 76. So it's more efficient to use a message broadcaster. So we'll go ahead and do that. We will make this invisible and no collisions as well. Cool, we'll wait for message. And we can have interact. And we want to send that message, everyone in range and only of one. And we can say uh, turn blue. So we'll go ahead and put that on our tile as the message we need for it to turn blue. We'll go ahead and test this out just to make sure it all works. And it does. Excellent. But now we're spamming E and nothing happens because we don't have anything to get rid of that volume and to make this turn red. Another thing about the animated decoration is it sends messages, uh, but it sends it to all. So we can't really have a message just for this one unless we toggle it on. So what we can do here is we can have a toggle. And this toggle can be turned on using this sort of volume on this message broadcaster. So this box will have a volume trigger and we can detect avatar in a small box of one by one by one. 
so we just basically copied the box dimensions and that is what you need to get pretty close to the 64 by 64 size and uh, when we enter it we'll say toggle on and when we leave we'll say toggle off and we only want to broadcast it to everyone in range of one by one by one so everything in this small area here um, which will be this tile so if we go back to our tile we need to put that toggle message on so we'll have that as false and we'll say toggle on and we can have toggle off so when I walk into this square it will toggle on this animated decoration and when I press E it will turn blue and when I walk out it won't turn blue what we can do now is duplicate this and we'll just have it next door we can have a few different ones just around it and we should be able to only affect the middle one when we press E and the others will remain unchanged unless we copy this over with Control D and bring it over here and Control D and we'll bring this one over here so now we have three different interactions where we can press E to change the tile to blue that's under us pretty simple stuff and we just used a toggle uh, with a couple of volumes but now how do we switch to red yellow and green uh, without needing to have all these different types of um, I would say logic or numpads to toggle things on and off because this one here is only send a message turn blue maybe we can um, send out the message change color and we can send this to all maybe and even though if it's to all um, it will only trigger the tile that's toggled on so we don't have to worry about it this allows us to reach the rule system so we can add something to the rule system here that will um, effectively change the color of the tile uh, so let's see if we can um, we'll keep it change color again I haven't done this before so I'm kind of working this out on the fly but it seems like the logic should be doable so we'll use a rule system and we'll add a variable and that variable will be uh, color number we'll show it at the start of the game okay we'll add a rule and we'll add a math rule and we can have change color color number we'll add one so each time it receives the message change color it's going to add one to the variable color number and we want to see that at the bottom of the HUD when the game begins so I'm just going to bring this up bring this one down and this one will be called HUD we want to see color number and we want that to be true cool alright when we do change color it's going to add one and then we're going to do compare number so we'll go ahead and add a comparison we're going to compare numbers and we're going to compare number if color number equals one we're going to go turn blue 
and what we can do is duplicate this one and if it if equals two we can say turn red and if it equals three turn green and if it equals four we can do turn yellow and what we can do here is we can now change a variable and set number value so when we have turn yellow we can set the number variable back to zero so that way it cycles again so next time we press E it will add one and then it will cycle to blue and we keep this cycle happening with just the one message going through the rule system uh, now what we need to do is put these messages on our colors so here we got turn blue now we can say turn red and we got turn yellow and this one's turn green and that should work so let's see if that does you can see at the bottom of the screen I have color number and it's set to zero when I press E it's turned the tile blue and it's changed the color number to one when I press E it's turned red and it's changed the color number to two and now when I did three it's changed it to green but then added it to zero so that's not correct something's wrong with our logic so we're going to go back and have a look we can see green equals to three and yellow equals to three this needs to be four so we made a little mistake there so now when we press E nope it doesn't like to send it because this is happening at the same time as this even though turn yellow should be working um, maybe it's just happening too quick let's have a look again we've got turn yellow interruptible turn green we'll try again so you can see it is four and then zero so let, let's remove this we'll just put a Z here so it doesn't turn it back to zero and see if the yellow occurs it does not let me have a look at what's going on so if it equals turn yellow do we not have that right message turn yellow do we have a yellow on the actual yeah yeah we do so we've got turn blue turn red turn yellow turn green let's switch these around so they're in numbered order compared to what I've done in the rule system <coughs> have a sip of tea So it doesn't like the third number for some reason. But it'll do the fourth one. That's very interesting. I don't know what's uh, actually happening here. So I've got turn green. Compare number. That's all correct. It's all checking. It's all checking for equals. It's turning. Interesting. Because number three should be turning green and number four should be turning yellow. And there's no exception. So one, two, green and yellow. 
Now for some reason the third one doesn't want to work. Is it something to do with the rule? So let's compare this one with this one. It's the same, play on message. Ah, here we go. Turn dot green. It, I put the um, variable in the wrong spot. Yeah, simple. Glad it was easy. It's a user error. Cool. And now if I say this one here to turn yellow, it works. So now when I press E, it cycles through the colors here. And what I can do now is delete and delete. And I can add a copy of this next to it. Just like that. So now I can cycle through. Ah, see these boxes also haven't changed. What I can do is I'll save this as a preset. Oops, got to click that first. So tile. And now with the preset, I can place it down evenly next to um, of course it's not going to go in particular order because it's based on the color number so we're trying to keep things simple here that's all um, so now what, what happens if we want to make the color combination open up a door and we need a specific combination happening. Alright, so what I wanted to play with today is, um, I haven't really played much with this switch component. So we're going to check that out. It's meant to be like a door, um, but I'm sure there's more to it. And this one here is a uh, component, so I can't block it with toggle. But we can send a message to everyone in range or to the rule system. But we need something else in range to talk to it. So if we say have a message broadcaster and we can toggle this on. Okay. So we can toggle this on with toggle on and off. Same thing. So we'll make sure that's turned off. We will toggle it on and toggle this off. And what we want is a message to be sent here each time a color is changed. Um, but the message required as well. Um, hmm. So what we can do here is um, message played at the start. We can say write, or we can have a correct, and we'll add a message argument to that. And this can be one, so you can add one. And if we turn it to something else, we can say incorrect. And we have that as a message argument. And we'll have that as another number. And this one here can be a minus one. So when things are incorrect, it will take one number away. 
um, or, 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 we don't need to worry about any number here. Um, we can just say right, and we can say wrong, and we'll let the um, switch component send the number. Because if we say wrong minus one, it goes through three wrong ones. It's going to take away three from the rule system. And when it's right, it's only going to add one, which means we're ever forever going to go backwards if we're trying to meet a, a number of correctness. Uh, for instance, if I have a rule system and I get five correct, I want the total to be five in a rule system. When the rule system equals five, it will send a message to open up a door. Uh, that's the um, big, that's the theory. So, if we send it to the um, to this one here, uh, because it's all with trigger, uh, would that work? I'm just thinking now, would this work? So we've got a switch. If the switch was a behavior, which I can toggle on and off, this would work. But I can't. It doesn't work that way. But what I can do... is when I have the message uh, correct, I can send a message to all. Oh, wait, I got the message right. When I got the message right, we can send a message maybe um, correct, maybe. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Let me duplicate this one. We'll go ahead and add a switch. Now the way a switch works is if what something is correct here, it's going to um, send a message so if something is right we're going to send a message message sent when state change to A and message change to B okay again haven't played with this before so we're just going to have to work it out and see what happens so here is this going to the rule system and we'll go ahead and add another variable so we'll come back out add a variable and it will be a number we'll call it combo combo will start on zero We'll show it at the start of the game. And we just need a rule to add and subtract from the combo. So we'll zoom in. And if we get correct, it's going to add whatever's in the um, message argument. And if it's incorrect, it's going to do what's in the message argument. Here we can say uh, check total and if it's incorrect we don't need a check total because we know it's not going to be max you're always going to be below so with check total we can go ahead and do compare numbers we can do check total and if combo equals five or how many squares that you have we can send a message open door and I don't have a door so I'll go ahead and just put one down um, even though that's not important at this stage 
Uh, we'll do some basic doors. We'll just have a wooden one. And we'll go ahead and add a door behavior. Now it looks like a, a switch, really. And what we can do here, message required to open, is open door. And that will be sent from the rule system when it equals five at the bottom. I'll go ahead and save that one and have a quick sip of tea. Scope room artist says switch is confusing because of the A sends B and vice versa. Yeah, I never really understood it um, besides using it as a replacement for a door, but I'm going to try to use it for a right and wrong state to interact with the rules and see if that works. So far, not really working out in my head, but you know, it could. Uh, right is one and wrong is that, and that sends to all. Um, so what I can do here is with the toggle, I can have right and we can send a message correct. Doesn't need a number. And it's just gonna be everyone in range of one and what I can do here is duplicate. And we can go ahead and send a message uh, incorrect um, with wrong to everyone in range, which goes to here. And here we'll send a message to the rules. So it's going to start on state. Oh, wait, we got to say wrong here, right? So let me just have a look. It's our uh, right and wrong. And uh, yeah, so that's not going to work either. Um, let me check one more thing. So this tile here sends the message out right and wrong. It will send it to this message broadcaster, right and wrong. And if it's right, it's going to send the message tile is right. And this one here will send out the message tile is wrong. Uh, here it's going to listen to tile is right and this one here will listen for tile is wrong and then it will send the message. So if tile is right, messages to receive before changing to B and this one here is message sent when state changed to A. So we're going to start this off as B and we will put this Um, no collisions, invisible, and what I can do here is change the toggle so it's a bit higher, so I can say like three, and now it's going to cover these numpads and activate activate them when I walk in it and walk out. So let's see if that works. So we can see the combination at the bottom, and when we flick through tile colors here, huh? Let's switch in to every two for some reason. Now it's working. Okay. Now when we go here, you can see the combination hit one, but not zero. Um, let me see what's going on here. I got too many things triggering at once. So if I move these out of the way, So have it the other way around. No, that was correct. 
so this one is correct um, but it's not doing what I expected let me just check again so blue nothing happens red something happens green yellow blue red green yellow blue all right let me check here what's going on so blue is correct and sends a message right red is incorrect and sends the message wrong wrong and wrong so when i push e it will be correct it sends a message right which is here right to everyone in range and this one here it should be wrong wrong to everyone in range now this is where I haven't used a switch before and I assume this is how it's going to work um, the scrape room, room says could you use the rules true false for corrected incorrect but I'm watching the master modeled by <laughs> Michelangelo. Yeah, very good. Um, so for this one, you could use true and false statements for one, but if you have a hundred different blocks um, and you have all hundred as a combination and you have all hundred in a correct state, you still need to have something that calculates the amount of right and wrong. So you need some sort of other message to give one or minus one. Um, without sending the minus one three times when it's incorrect three times when cycling through this if that makes sense so if the message is right it should send uh, correct and add one straight away so let me just go ahead and do that but it doesn't it waits until it switches so if I say tile is wrong and this one tile is right just moving them around so when I press E there's my one and when I press E it's taken it away and it won't do it again until I push E and it's correct hey we got it working so basically what I've done here and it's successful is that when the tile sends the message uh, when a tile is blue it's right and it will send a message to the message broadcaster um, to both of them uh, this one will be the one that triggers it sends the message this tile is right or this tile is right and it goes to this switch so if tile is right it will send the message it's correct because when it switches from B, when tile is right is sent, it switches back to A and it triggers the message correct. Now tile is wrong will send a message incorrect and it minuses one from the score and switches back to state B. Because we have tile is wrong three times in a row, it won't switch any of these numbers around until the message is tile is right so it keeps the ones and uh, plus one and minus one in check and that way when we have multiple tiles which we can do now and have a quick look so i'll go ahead and save this as the preset and we're going to go ahead and just add okay Why are you underground? Save it as a new preset, see what happens. Huh. Don't you love it? Alright, now that's not going to work. So let's do it a different way. We'll say um, all these assets will be uh, tiles 
and this one here can be tile master and we can go ahead and put all the tiles on the tile master and then we'll save that as the preset cool now that will sit on the ground properly because it is the base all right so we set up the rule so if we have a total of five correct it will open up the door and what we can do here is change the message from right and wrong to the color combination we want so we can do blue as the first one and then blue will be wrong and red can be right and then we can do um, blue will be wrong uh, let's do green so we'll just do it in order and we'll have this one as right um, and then the next one just making sure I haven't stuffed that up anywhere no it looks good all right and the next here we'll have this one as wrong and we will need yellow as right and the last one we can have a random color um, let's make it red okay so the first one needs to be blue second one needs to be red third one needs to be green and the fourth one needs to be yellow Ooh, that didn't work out give me one second okay so we can't use this anymore because when we switch to a different tile it's not turning yellow um, so let me show you an example it's adding two instead of one it's adding two and that's kind of strange Now this is a weird game maker behavior. Is it because it's too close? No, that makes no sense. Is it because of the player interact being too large? This could possibly be it. So what I'll do here is I'm going to change the avatar to a custom avatar. Um, I don't know, let's pick something I'll just pick the usual adventurer jet and here we can go to our controller and change the interaction maybe to 1.25 it shouldn't be activating the rest anyway but let's see what's going on Okay, it's working now. It was the interaction ring. Okay, there we go. So that's the combination we picked. Blue, red, green, yellow, red. Once all of them are done, it sends the message to open up the door. So the game maker works logically. I find that people have been saying that um, it's behaving weird or it's not doing things, um, it's spawning different things or adding things that it shouldn't. Um, I find there is always a logical explanation and a way to fix things. Um, so there's more than one way to do something. So if the way that you're discovering is acting weird, um, like mine was, it was just an interaction ring that was touching two different things at the same time. Um, so I just changed something and now it works as intended. The logic of the rule system works as intended, I believe. From all the complicated stuff I put together, I haven't found a logic issue. So if you're having troubles with it, 
it could be something that you can alter by doing it a different way. So now we've got our combination that it works and we can expand on that. So we can just say add more. Uh, get rid of all that. Presets, get rid of tile 2, bye bye. I'll add this, get rid of that. And same thing, all we do is just change the game rules to be um, from whatever we need. So here we've got a total of 5 before it opens a door. We can just change it to 10 to make it tile 10 tiles and here again all you need to do is just change the message from right to wrong and everything else will stay the same you don't have to do anything else so we can do um, here we can do blue and we can make red which is the same as the top two um, then we can do blue again and then we can do red again and that one is just a combination of blue red blue red blue red and now it's going to be listening in for um, for 10 so we got five the doors not open anymore because we need uh, more combinations Oh, error. Doesn't happen all the time as expected. Did I actually put a correct thing in here? No. <laughs> That's my fault. User error. So right. And um, red is meant to be right. Well, it didn't trigger with this one. And it should have. Let's try that again. I'll save. Okay, so the bottom one works. We've got our five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yay! So we've got our color combination correct. And now we can go through the door. And it's easy as that, really. I mean, yeah, it does have a few things. The game maker has a few works to work around with um, but if you find that it is acting weird you can always clear your cache data um, but just know that the rules system works as intended I believe when it comes to logic so if something is misbehaving or misfiring um, it's usually a logic issue I would change the message of something that's spawning weirdly to see if there's a second one that's spawning. You might have a duplicate on top of each other or somewhere that you forgot. Um, you'll, you'll be surprised on, on the things you'll miss um, and then just turn around and think it's the game maker. But when you see other people make all these complicated mechanics that it works as intended, you have to think to yourself, is it something that you can fix up and double check? Um, because I, I do some pretty complicated stuff and they don't work uh, I mean they work as intended uh, once all the logic is rigged up correctly and it continues working correctly uh, when uploaded to land so um, do check and if you think it's not um, your fault with the logic and it is purely a bug in a game maker uh, send me a message show me a screenshot let me know what you're doing I'll give you a solution uh, because I've seen nearly all types of uh, logic put together and it all works quite well. And when 0 0.10 comes out, it will be improved even more. There's a lot more logic going to be introduced. 
that's going to be really cool. All right, so, um, and then, yeah, all you need to do here is just expand right and wrong messages. Um, all of this gets toggled on and off due to the volume. And um, you just change the number in the rule system for how many you want for it to be correct uh, before it lets you in. And you can change it so it's not colors. It can be numbers. Uh, and you can cycle through all nine numbers if you want. So you can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to zero or whatever you want. Um, and just have the numbers cycle through. And when the right combination is selected of numbers, a safe opens up. Um, a bomb stops detonating, a door opens, whatever you want. When zero ten, that rhymes, yay. <coughs> um, soon, I'll say very soon. We're in the final testing stages now. Final bug fixing and testing stages. So you won't have to wait forever for this one. And we're going to have some exciting things added. Yay! Uh, you can't have the door open for one player in a multiplayer game. Uh, the door is MP, and MP activates for everyone. So if I go to type in door, there's no single player door. So if you want to work around this, all you do is just have a teleport. So um, what I can do here is um, instead of open door, I can have a teleport system and it requires a message open door, which is the thing that gets sent by the rule system when the combination is correct. So just choose that asset, which, which is itself um, and I'll just trim this down to five for the sake of the example. So when we get all five of these correct, it doesn't teleport to player. Nice. Uh, open dot door, open dot door, spawning point, spawning point. Um, that's interesting. So compare numbers, if it equals to five, open door. So it should theoretically send a message to the avatar to teleport him. But no teleport. Can't explain why. Usually this stuff works. Maybe um, teleports require a direct input from the uh, player. So it would probably need a volume trigger. So in this case, you can just um, put down a numpad, uh, which uh, has a volume and you can have the message as uh, open open door. We'll get rid of it from the door itself. Um, we will make this one invisible with no collisions. And we can make this the whole map. So it just covers the whole map. Um, and we'll go ahead and save that as a preset. Awesome, and now all we need to do is have an asset spawner, and that asset spawner will bring out this preset uh, when a message uh, open door is sent. So if my theory is correct, after doing the combination, it will now teleport me to the teleporter because the rule system won't teleport the player um, because it doesn't know which player to teleport um, and it won't send it to all by the looks of it to teleport um, it needs a trigger so 
and what you can do here is um, with the teleport you just add a plant behavior and you can just uh, get rid of it kill TP go ahead and save over that preset so now it has a plant behavior with kill TP and all you do here is with this teleport you send a message after you teleport to kill TP and it will get rid of that um, volume it cleans things up and it won't accidentally trigger again if there's some sort of weakness because it's not there anymore and that's it and now that TP has disappeared we've got a combination lock with the rule system so when a combination is correct um, it will send a message to this asset spawner and teleport the player to the next level or wherever you want the player to go after the combination is correct you can have doors open you can have sounds playing you can have animations trigger um, you can have anything you want when it comes to the correct combination it doesn't need to be colors it can be numbers uh, it's just a visual aspect and, and the same thing here you just change the message at start to be right or wrong uh, depending on what combination you want and then these little um, switches uh, will send a message to the rule system if it's correct or not you don't need to change any of these once they're set up and that's the usefulness of a switch so you can have something be completely wrong many many times in a row and not take away one from the rule system uh, and when it's correct it will add one and when you change it again it will take away one and stay uh, on that message until the right is correct. So this is a good way of using a switch um, with the rule system to add and take away one for combination systems. So if that MP, the door only open for one player, uh, no, so MP doors open for everyone. I think I just reread the message again, it's just reconfirming. Um, but that's it for today guys um, just wanted to show you a basic concept uh, I wanted to play around with the switch and what uses it could be used for with the rule system um, we've played around with some variables and some rules um, for correct and incorrect um, the total needed to open the door once all the combinations correct um, and we have the cycling of going through the animated decoration so each time we press E um, it adds one to color number so it knows which message to send out and once the last one is hit it turns this back to zero so the cycle begins again all keeping the same message and all keeping very tight rules so you don't have to duplicate this 800 times for 800 squares you can use one set of rules for all the squares and all you need to do is just toggle them on and off using a volume trigger stand in the volume trigger everything in a small range i have this set up on my tower defense template as well that's pretty much how i did it but i um, hope this was useful uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, next week same time same day i'll go over some more logic doing something else but uh, thanks for tuning in. Take care. Bye-bye.